All right, microphone's live. We're recording. I'm going to have two links down below in the description box. Say what you will about ringside news, because I know there's sometimes some clickbaity stuff. But McMahon and Laurinaitis have, in fact, found themselves in some hot water. Uh, there's also an article from Wrestling Inc. that talks about Lesnar supposedly being a little bit involved. But it may not be as bad as you think. This is the plaintiff, the alleged victim. I use that word because I just, I don't know what to make of this case. I just came across it yesterday. This whole bombshell that was dropped occurred two days ago. And uh, basically it alleges that McMahon basically sexually exploited and trafficked Janelle Grant around to various employees and some, and one superstar named Brock Lesnar just kind of like coerced, pressured her into doing it. So this article, and I can't show it due to the sensitive nature of, of the content, like it's actually very explicit. Like you talk about Edge being the rated R superstar. Well, this is like some triple X stuff, okay? Uh, but basically in there, not to defend anybody and to play devil's advocate, uh, if he did that shit, then great. To the fullest extent of the law, you know, nail him, nail John Laronitis and all this stuff. So in the beginning, what happened with McMahon over the course of history, so I'm trying to recap all this off the top of my head here without just reading and plagiarizing the article, is he's known for, you know, being a, a bit of a deviant, sexually speaking, paying off women to keep them hush, multiple allegations. And again, I talked about this with Ric Flair in a recent video and how I fell victim to some bullshit over two decades ago ended up being completely false. And that was proven as the person admitted to their wrongdoing. Whether or not that had happened to me or not, I still like to give, like I said, the benefit of the doubt. But I have to admit when it comes to McMahon specifically, it just things don't look good. However, if it was always with parties involved and it was all mutually consentive, then so it is. So so be it. You know what I mean? This this is like the whole Bill Clinton, Monica Lewinsky thing. And maybe, right? Where that wasn't abuse. I can't even say the word because it can get flagged on YouTube. Where supposedly there was no abuse there. And well, maybe abuse of power, but I mean in terms of actual okay, that kind of abuse. Um, it was it was mutual. Okay? And, and so that stuff to me is not as extreme. It's still like, oh, that sucks because, you know, you're supposed to be married and all this kind of stuff. But if everybody involved, like I said, were on board with what was going on, then that's their business, however perverted you may think it is. But this is a little different. This alleges that Janelle Grant was not on board. The problem is, again, to play devil's advocate, and I can't, I can't, you could... Links are going to be down below in the description box. You could read them on your own, the texts. Now, the text could be faked. However, when there's an actual lawsuit, you don't think that investigators are going to look into the legitimacy, the authenticity of the texts. So naturally, there's probably next to no way that the texts are potentially fake. But it's basically them sexting each other. And her basically saying, oh, baby, you know, to McMahon. Yeah, you know, I'm not really feeling myself this week, but uh, tell Johnny, you know, I should be good for next week and, and all this sort of stuff. I'm not seeing anything about her saying, you know, I'm really done with this. I don't want to keep doing this. I'm not seeing any of that. That doesn't mean that she hasn't verbally said that to him again. I don't know. We don't know. He knows, she knows, we don't know for certain. We see what we see in the text messages, but we don't know what verbal communications they've had. Maybe she just plays up, you know, puts on a happy face and okay, because she's afraid of, of whatever, but it doesn't look like he's ever violently threatened her, maybe with her job or whatever, but then she felt trapped. So it states, and this all happened around 2019 to 2022. But for about a three-year period that she was a um, WWE employee. Now, how he got involved, 
uh, supposedly, I said allegedly. This one I'll read word for word just to, okay? Because I feel like I'm, I'm stuttering and I'm starting to go in circles already. A bombshell was dropped on the wrestling world Thursday afternoon after a lawsuit filed by Janelle Grant alleging that McMahon and John Laurinaitis engaged in sex trafficking made headlines. Among the allegations in the suit were that McMahon sexually abused and exploited Grant, trafficked her to other WWE employees, including John Laurinaitis, and attempted to do so with a former UFC heavyweight champion the company was actively trying to resign in 2020, a.k.a. Brock Lesnar. The Wall Street Journal reports that the former UFC champion in question is none other than longtime star Brock Lesnar. According to the suit, Grant, Janelle Grant, the girl, was instructed by McMahon to create personalized you know, sexual content for Lesnar, referred to only as UFC and WWE star in the lawsuit, in an attempt to sway Lesnar towards re-signing with WWE around the 2020 uh, time period. Grant alleges that Lesnar told McMahon that he enjoyed the content that she provided and that McMahon later told Grant that Lesnar re-signed with the WWE in part so that he could have sexual relations with Grant. Now, my thing with this is this, and, and it's going to sound rude, but I'm, ju I'm just going to say it bluntly. I, I could be wrong. This is just my initial... I, I wouldn't say knee-jerk reaction because I have looked into this like for a good little bit there yesterday. But if you're Lesnar, you're, you're a star. You're, you know what I mean? And like you're known. There's a lot of women... I'm sure, would want to be with him. And even if that's not true, why would Lesnar need to be in WWE to keep in contact with her? It says right here that the suit further claims that McMahon gave Lesnar her phone number in December, leading to Lesnar requesting that she sends him more explicit content. And then Grant, she alleges that Lesnar told her directly that he'd want to set up a play date between the two of them, though the encounter would ultimately not take place due to a snowstorm disrupting Lesnar's travel plans, and Grant alleges that McMahon would attempt to traffic her to Lesnar one final time in March of 2022, with McMahon once again telling her to send photos to Lesnar. Ultimately, the suit alleges that a physical meeting between Lesnar and Grant never actually took place. Lesnar has not commented on this. Yeah, so I'm going to go back to it. You're this guy. And again, it, it might it might sound really rude. He already has direct contact with Grant, say, uh, saying that that's true, let's say. Assuming it's true. How does he need to be signed with the WWE to continue relations with Miss Grant? If that's what he wanted to pursue. They could just hook up on their own flights he's got the money what does he need to be in wwe for does it make it easier for him to travel abroad kind of thing like i'm i'm not understanding that part why does he need to be in wwe how how was it with all due respect to her how was was it that she had that much power that it was like you know what he's thinking yeah i'm gonna come back just because of her so i can keep up with her I don't, I don't get it. Some of the weirder things that have been discussed that I got to be careful how I word it with McMahon is allegedly he defecated on her head during a threesome with John Lar John Laurinaitis. Now these things are quite possible because there are a lot of weird people out there, especially when it comes to, you know, SEX stuff. Again, I got to be careful how many times. This is supposed to be a wrestling channel, but part of the wrestling community, the wrestling world. It's Vincent Kennedy McMahon, for crying out loud. So yeah, so the text messages are him being obsessed with uh, people of color as well, wanting to engage in group activities with Miss Grant. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff. So again, I'm not defending him. I'm also not accusing him. And you could call it what you want, fence-sitting, it's that thing again where if I don't have... A, like, I haven't seen the text messages. I've seen screenshots of text messages with the name Vince at the top. For all we know, it's Vince Russo. You know what I mean? Like, it's just... 
until we know for sure it's authentic. But again, if he's actually going to trial and they do all the proper investigative forensic work, whatever it's called, they can they can find out the legitimacy of those text messages if they were actually sent from his phone and this, that and the other thing that they can find out. And then if that's true, well, then that makes him guilty because then it uh, uh, of at least those text messages. What I don't understand with her, no offense, and, and again, I'm not her, okay, is why would you, at, le at least based, based on the text now, okay, why would you stick around? What was it that you were so afraid of that was going to get out? Because apparently this hasn't happened to any other employee to this capacity being trafficked around. Being, oh, yeah, go to him. Oh, when you're done, go see John Laronitis. Go with all these you know, other WW employees, now some of the superstars like Brock Lesnar. It, it's like, how do you willingly, you know what I mean? Like, and I know this sounds bad because if there are some women watching this, it's like, you don't understand. And you're right. I, I don't. I was almost a victim a long time ago. Yeah, I know. People always go, what? You're a big dude, you know, and all that. It's, you'd be surprised. It can happen. Some people think it's funny. Right? When it's a guy, when it happens to a guy, it can't happen to a guy. Okay? Uh, but yeah, like, I, I just, I, again, I'd have to know all the de Like, I would have to have a 30-second conversation with her and, and ask her, like, did you feel like your life was in danger? You know what I mean? Like, to understand how, how did you go from getting employed to feeling like you were trapped? Because it was stated by her lawyer, I believe, that she felt trapped and caged were the words, and I'm trying to understand with all due respect, in what way did she feel, Kate? Okay? Because again, based on the take text messages, it, it d doesn't sound like she feels caged, unless she was afraid, again, like I said, and just wanted to upplay it, and oh yes, baby, oh yeah, yeah, I'll do it, and then meanwhile, she's like crying and wanting to jump out a window kind of thing. Like, I don't know, but it is confusing. It doesn't make it look too much like McMahon is is sexually a cr uh, criminally responsible from a sexual perspective. It just looks like he's, you know, you know what I'm saying? A deviant, sexual deviant. And she just partook in it somewhat looking like it was willingly. Because what happens if she just said no? There's no mention of her saying, you know, I'm really getting tired of this. Uh, like I just, that's the part where I feel like I'm so confused and, and I don't want to be like, what the hell's wrong with you? Because I don't know her situation. Again, I haven't spoken to her. All I've read is multiple different, you know, headlines just talking about this. So there's definitely something going on. There, there definitely was a trail of him paying several millions of dollars to different employees. And this is not the first time this has happened. So we know that there's something going on with him, but whether or not he's responsible from a criminal perspective remains to be seen, at least by me, before I start pointing the finger and going, what the hell's wrong with you, right? So then there, and we, we won't get into it, but I'm still going to talk about it. And then there's the whole E. Jean Carroll thing with Trump and it ties in with the whole, you know, sexual assault and stuff like that alleges that Trump assaulted E. Jean Carroll back in the mid-90s, and then she filed a lawsuit again when he became president. I'm just saying, like, it, it, it seems to happen a lot, and I really hope a lot of these stories are fake, obviously, for the, for the sake of these alleged victims, right? But I, I do know that people do do these things on both sides. They, they actually do these nasty things. And on the other side, some people make false claims, which is what had happened to me some two decades ago. So I know that that can happen. Uh, and now there's the defamation thing with Trump. But I'm just saying like the, and then and a lot of times, you know, they wait a super long time in this case, you know, three years better than like almost 30 something years here. I, this whole thing's a mess. So I'm just going to end it here because I feel like I'm again stuttering and I'm running out of things to say. I just wanted to bring the awareness that with the whole McMahon and, and the assault stuff and the hush money and supposedly having an affair and paying off such and such employees. And then you look at the show back in the day with the divas when you had your Stacey Keeblers, 
and you had your Trish Stratuses walking around like dogs and doing all these weird things with the Bobby Lashley thing from years back. Like, there's just a lot of weird stuff that's like, really? Is this, like, wrestling? Like, I watched it, but it was weird, you know? So... I didn't exactly change the channel, but it, I could have done without it, quite honestly. It wasn't the place and time, in my opinion, for that kind of content. It was just kind of weird. Uh, then you have all these allegations come out, you know, decades later that he paid these women to stay silent because of their affairs. Like I said, that's not a criminal thing. Uh, no one's getting violated against their own will there. But this completely changes it because it alleges that it was not consensual she did not want to partake in these even though taking a look some of the text messages would seem to kind of indicate otherwise if i was an investigator obviously i'd have to look into it try to get all the details before you just point the finger and go you're just a crazy whatever to whoever party you want to you want to accuse someone's lying someone's exaggerating the truth or denying the truth of something and it's just that sad overall as for Lesnar specifically, well, there doesn't look like there would have been anything criminal on his part. It, it doesn't look like at any point that he threatened, bitch, you better meet with me. And like, You know what I mean? Like, none of that stuff. It was just back and forth, what seemed to be mutual again. Uh, but to point him into it and say that he, he mainly only signed back with the WWE so he could have affairs with her... It just seems weird. You could have the affair with her without... Like, am I missing something? Help me shed some light on this if you have some information. Or from a psychological standpoint, where does it make sense that it would benefit him to be with WWE in order to further his advances with her? Man, this thing's a mess. Anyhow, I'm going to go watch... What are we? Smackdown. I'm going to make my video on that soon. But I wanted to record this right away because th this is some big news, like I said. That that's the main highlight, the main takeaway from this is that this is a pending investigation now uh, if you care about this stuff. I know that a lot of people don't. You just care about the day-to-day -day stuff that happens in the WWE inside of the ring, not this kind of stuff. I'm into literally all things that have to do with wrestling. And then with Kevin Dunn and... Yeah, there, and, there, and there's been some shady stuff with Laurinaitis, supposedly, as well. It's a complete mess. As always, if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It does greatly help support the channel with the algorithm. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. I'll bend it in half, twist it. You'll get a solo Sokoa, solo and spike right in the rear. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, exactly. Naturally, that would be great. But if not... Thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care, and maybe I'll see some of you in the next one. Bye for now.